Several months ago, a company based in China, whom I'd never heard of before, contacted me to review one of their watches. They mentioned that the watch in question was of their own design and utilized an in-house movement with a 28800 escapement. When I read that the movement was in-house, well, that got my attention and I said, sure, why not? And within a couple of weeks, the watch turned up. Due to other video projects, it sat for a while in my to-do pile. <laughs> yes, I have a pile. But I eventually managed to make a start on the project last week. Now, I will state here that although they sent this watch to me as a review model, I stated from the outset that I would share my true thoughts no matter what I found in their watch. And I have to admit, they must have been very confident with the quality of their offerings to be willing to send a sample to a watch repairer who shares his findings in high definition video for all to see. In short, this is not a paid promotion. But before I share my thoughts, I will say that I checked into the price of these watches and was stunned to see that they actually sell for $50 on AliExpress. I have to admit, when I saw that price, my expectations about the watch hit the floor. And I will also admit, I had a little chuckle and it did stay longer in my to-do pile as a result. Not that I'm a watch snob, I just thought it would be a waste of time and possibly not very good content for the channel. But eventually, I did take the watch out of the box and I removed all the wrapping and was actually quite amazed at the quality. Actually, I was gobsmacked. For the price, I was expecting a chrome-plated, budget-feeling watch, but this actually felt quality in my hands, a nice weight to it. The bracelet was well-constructed and had a butterfly clasp. The case was solid-feeling and well-finished. Looking at the specs on the AliExpress site, I observed that the case was indeed stainless steel and the crystal is said to be sapphire, which, if true, helps resist scratches. The dial is not just a painted piece of brass, which you would expect from a budget offering. It had raised dial chapters and, well, quality printing. Altogether, on the surface, this really surprised me. For a $50 price tag, you get a lot of watch. But what do we have under the hood? I was interested to know more about the 28800B in-house movement. Actually, that's what got my interest in the first place. But looking at the movement, I was a little bit disappointed to see that it was, or at least looked like a DG2813 movement. And I'm not being unkind. I simply know these movements to be of quite low quality. However, this is a $50 watch. I suspect the case, bracelet, dial and hand alone would cost more than that if I was to purchase those individually. So I wound the movement and I put it on the machine to see what I could see. And I can see that the timekeeping is not certified chronometer standards by any means, but I didn't expect it to be in the least. The beat was 28800 as advertised and well, if it keeps working, I can see that it could possibly be a nice little dress watch. I decided to dig deeper and remove the movement from the watch case. Can you see the rust starting to develop on my case opener here? It seems that since bringing all my tools over from the UK, they don't really like the humidity too much. All my tools are starting to rust is a real pain in the ass. I started cleaning and treating them with a rust inhibitor, which seems to be working fine.
Well, I have the movement out of the case. I'm going to continue and strip the movement down. Well now that's a bit screwed. Looks like the underside of the train bridge has some quite heavy scoring. I can't see any debris so it does look like this was done during manufacture or assembly. It does look pretty nasty.
Well, that's it stripped down. I would normally clean and put this back together with fresh lubricant and see what performance gains I can achieve. But in this case, well, I'm not sure that I would really get any gains due to the finish on the movement. What strikes me hard with this watch is that it is actually really good quality for the price, but the movement lets it down. But logically speaking, it would not really be that price or even close to that price without some kind of compromise. And of course, the compromise here is the movement. Oh, sod it. I, I can't totally scrap this. I, I'm going to clean this. I'm going to put it back together with some fresh lubricant. I just want to know what we can get out of it. It's a lovely little watch. Maybe it can be enjoyed for a little while. I have no idea why the setting lever got discolored like that. It was nowhere near the heater in the cleaning machine and none of the other components suffered the same fate. It's a real mystery. If I could be bothered, I would clean and polish it up, but <laughs> it's really not worth my time.
By the way, I sent pictures of my findings to Starking, and they responded by standing by their claims that the movement would be good for at least five years before needing replacement or service. Now, I personally don't think so, but my thoughts are that even if this watch lasts only 12 months, <laughs> for $50, it's still a bargain. But I have a cunning plan. Now, stick with me, and I'll let you in on it. But first, let's take another look at the performance now that I've put the movement back together. So, uh, a little boost in amplitude, and the timing seems reasonable. I mean, I could put this back together, and I reckon that it will last quite a while, and would be an enjoyable watch to wear. The movement seems to be a reasonable timekeeper, but for me, the value is in the case and the bracelet. Is this watch worth it? I would say yes, why not? It, it looks good, and it feels quality, and as long as the movement holds out, it can be enjoyed. I could put this back together, or I could explore another option. Now this movement is actually loosely based on a Japanese Citizen Myota movement, the Myota 8215. I say loosely based because it does share the same diameter, the same stem height, and the dial feet placements, but it's not a hacking movement, and it is a 21600 BPH movement rather than a 28800. The Myota 8215 is a much better quality movement, however, that quality does come at a price. As a matter of fact, about the same price as this watch complete. I just happen to have one in stock, so I'm going to explore using it for this watch and see where we get. First I fitted the dial, and all went well. I then fitted the hour hand, and well, that's okay, that fitted fine. I then tried to fit the minute hand, and oh, okay. That failed. The DG2813 Canon Pinion is 0.9mm diameter, and therefore so is the hole in the minute hand. But the 8215 requires a hand with the hole being 1mm diameter. Well, this is not a problem. I can broach that hole out. And so now the minute hand fits, let's try the second hand. Okay, the second hand is too loose, but there is a little trick to tightening the pipes of second hands. Take a pin vise and hold the second hand by its pipe in the pin vise jaws, and then just tighten the vise and the pipe will compress. And, well, this did the trick. And with that done, all we have to do is remove the crown from the existing stem and fit it to the Myota stem. Now this is a job I've demonstrated several times in previous videos.
And well, look at that. A nice little upgrade should the original movement fail. My recommendation is if you like this style of watch, you could purchase it, get as much use and enjoyment out of it as you can, and should the movement fail, well, you can purchase a replacement DG2813 quite easily online. Or you can upgrade to a Myota 8215. If this watch didn't have such a nice quality case and bracelet, well, it wouldn't be worth the time and trouble. But for $50, it's definitely worth it. It's definitely a lot of watch for the money. That's just my opinion. But what do you think? Is this a watch that you would buy or would you not touch it with a barge pole? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did and you've not done so already, then please consider subscribing. It is free and if you click the bell, you'll be notified whenever I publish new content and I do have a few nice projects on the go. And if you're interested in knowing more about watch repair, then check out www.watchrepairlessons.com where I offer full watch repair course and plenty of extra content which is not available on YouTube. And this video was made possible with the support of my patrons whom I thank so, so much. And I'll see you next time.